guys! Welcome back to our YouTube channel! How are you guys? I hope everyone is doing okay. As I am shooting this video guys, I am now here in Canada and I landed as a permanent resident. So I will be talking in English guys. English only challenge ang atake sa ang video. Because I want to make this video to help my fellow Filipinos so I thought might as well speak in English guys just in case any other foreign nationals are watching this video at least they'll be able to understand me. Sure. Okay, so in this video guys, I will help you to get started with your online application for a permanent resident visa. So just a disclaimer, this whole process is according to IRCC's checklist and we processed our application in June 2023. So if there are any changes in this process, feel free to check the official website of IRCC. I will put the link below for your reference. So as of today guys, March 2024, today is March 13. IRCC is still using the same checklist that I used during my application, so we're good to go. We don't have a complicated case, so we're able to process everything without paying for a lawyer or representative. We applied online by ourselves or what they call DIY or do-it-yourself. So for your reference, here are the fees that you will have to pay depending on your application. And for us, we applied under family sponsorship for spouse or partner. So you need to pay for the biometrics fee and the RPRF or the rights of permanent residence fee. So RPRF costs 1,080 Canadian dollars. And in any case that you will not become a permanent resident, this fee is refundable. And for the biometrics fee, it costs 85 Canadian dollars. And we pay the total of 1,165 Canadian dollars. It is not required to pay all of this upfront. However, I highly suggest that you pay it during your application to lessen the processing time of your application and make sure that you save a copy of these receipts as you will upload it in the application portal once you started your application. If you're getting a representative or lawyer who will help you with the process, then there's a possibility that you will spend more than that. Okay. Usually, those who have complicated cases are the ones seeking help from the lawyers and representatives. So if you need a representative or lawyer during your application, make sure that they are unauthorized representatives of IRCC. And I believe that there is a form you will have to fill up for this one in which I am not covering in this video because I don't have a personal experience about it. So just a quick context, me and my sponsor who is my husband were in a long distance relationship way back 2016 and the sponsor is living in Canada while me the principal applicant is living in the Philippines. So he's a permanent resident in Canada and we got married in 2023 and this is our first marriage and we have no dependent children and we are not living together during the process of the sponsorship. So if you have a similar situation with us, then you want to continue watching this video. I'm just reading it here, guys, just so I don't miss the detail. So for the timeline, guys, as I said, we started the application on June 19, 2023. We received the AOR on August 23, and we received the biometrics request on August 29th, medical request on September 1st. We got eligible around October 2023 and received the pre-arrival letter on October 24. And we processed the rest of the documents, such as submitting my passport and everything in between in November. And I got my PR visa in November 24. Then I arrived here in Canada, December 11, 2023. So the processing time took us six months. So I hope this video will help you to have your permanent resident visa soon. The common question before applying is, what are the requirements that we need to prepare? So to make the process as seamless as possible, you need to prepare these important documents. For me, as the principal applicant, here are the requirements that I prepared. Birth certificate, passport that is valid for at least more than one year. You want to be sure that your passport will not expire until your flight to Canada. So if it will expire soon, then you better apply for renewal before you start your application. NBI clearance, marriage certificate, advisory and marriages permanent resident photo so i'm adding the link to the description box below so you can download it and take it to your photographer for the instruction because this photo needs to be specific for the sponsor here are the requirements that they need to prepare passport pr card birth certificate advisory in marriages 
proof of income employment verification. So make sure that everything is in correct spelling to avoid delay in the process. So now here are the additional documents to prepare for your proof of relationship. If the principal applicant and the sponsor are currently living together, you guys need to provide at least two of these. Proof of joint ownership, rental agreement that shows your name and the sponsor's name as the occupant of the rental property, Proof of joint utility accounts. This could be joint account, electricity, water, phone bills, etc. You just have to provide at least one. Vehicle insurance that shows your name and the sponsor's name have been declared to the insurance company. Copies of government issued IDs that shows you two have the same address. And other documents that shows the same address, one document for each of you. And if not, if you guys are not living together, then you have to provide a proof of contact. So for proof of contacts, this could be screenshots of your conversations, emails, calls, and other proofs of contact between you and the sponsor. If your conversations are not in English or French, then you have to provide a certified translation either in English or French. And the second one, you need to provide proof of sponsor's visit. This can be scanned copy of plane tickets, boarding pass, passport stamp showing the entry and exit in your country. If no proof of visit, you have to provide an explanation. Now I have a question for you guys. This is Q&A portion. First question, are you guys currently living together? Do you and your spouse have any children together? Is this your first marriage for both you and your spouse? Have you and your spouse been married for a minimum of two years as of the date of application? So if you answer yes to all four questions, you don't have to prepare the following documents I will mention. But if you did not answer yes to all four questions, you also need to prepare photos of your wedding, customary celebrations, outings, etc. in different places and dates. And at least two of important documents for you and your spouse showing that you recognize as each other's spouse. It can be employment or insurance benefits, documentary evidence of financial support between you and your sponsor or shared expenses, proof that your relationship is recognized by your friends and family. This can be letters from your friends or family or social media posts or social media informations. Proof of past cohabitation if you are not currently living together but you did at one point in the past. So if you already have all of those requirements that I mentioned, then you can start your application online. Before proceeding to the application portal in which we're going to submit the application, let's talk about this checklist first. So everything you need for your application is in this checklist. So let's say you already gathered all necessary documents. The first thing you need to do is download the checklist, the IMM5533. So this is the one that I mentioned that until now 2024, I RCC is still using the same checklist that I used. So as you can see at the bottom, there is IMM5533 and then 09-2022, that means this checklist was updated September 2022. Everything you need to do step by step is on this checklist. So always refer to this checklist. Now you can start your online application. I will show it to you guys. So first thing, first you have to make an account in permanent resident portal. I will put the link of that portal down at the description box below. So make sure you remember your email and password. And once you're inside the portal, you can start a new application just to clarify this one the person who's going to create the application portal is the principal applicant so this is how the portal looks like so as you can see guys i have here the previous application that i did it's in june 19 2023 if you're new if you just created your account so this thing will not appear in your end so you have to create new application it will ask program under which you are applying so for us, it is permanent residence, including refugee and resettlement. Okay. So, and then it will give you program under which you are applying. You have to select family because on our end, we are married. So we select family category you're applying under spouse. 
There are other choices like common law partner, conjugal partner, dependent child. So in our case, it's spouse. So for the subcategory, you're applying under spouse or common law. So in our case, we selected family class outside Canada because I am in the Philippines during our application. So for custom application title, you can name it whatever you want. So for me, I just put my name. You may put any name you want to rename your application. So for your profile, you can select preferred language, English, family name. So guys, always remember that when you fill up this form, make sure that it reflects what's in your passport. Okay, you have to be consistent. Whatever's on your passport, that's the name that you need to put in your application. So let's say you just fill up these things and then date of birth. The mailing address, this is your residential address. So in our case, we don't have any dependents, so I'll just leave that as is. And then save and continue. Once you're inside the application portal, it will give you the rest of the forms that you need to fill out. So you have to refer everything in the checklist. You have to check your eligibility as well. So you can review the eligibility criteria to make sure that you're eligible. You can review the application guide and check the document checklist to see what you will need. As you can see, this website is pretty straightforward. It provides all the required forms and files that you need to upload. And once you start filling out the form, it will show us in progress. And if you haven't started it yet, then it will say not started. Everything that I mentioned about the checklist is here, including which forms and documents you need to submit. And once you click edit, it will direct you to fill out the necessary forms. And all you have to do is fill in the form with your personal details truthfully and consistently. If a question does not apply to you, always write NA or not applicable and never leave any questions blank as it might result in your application being returned. And once you're done, simply click save and continue and it will take you to the next set of questions. Don't worry if you need to edit or change something, you can always go back and edit it as long as the application hasn't been submitted. Some forms need to be filled out directly on the portal while others need to be downloaded. When you click download, the file may not open if your PDF viewer is not installed or compatible. In my case, I installed Adobe PDF Reader to open the file. And if there is another way to do this, feel free to share it in the comment section below. Once you've downloaded the form, open it in the PDF viewer and the complete form will be displayed. For example, this one is IMM1344. I believe this form is for the sponsor. Since the account is created by the principal applicant, there is also a form that the sponsor needs to fill out. So the sponsor form should be downloaded, completed, and then uploaded into the portal. The sponsor can either log into the principal's account to upload it, or they can send the completed form to the principal applicant who will upload it. Always read the instructions and questions carefully before answering. And again, never leave any spaces blank. Write not applicable or NA if something doesn't apply to you. And you'll know if a question doesn't require NA or not applicable because it will automatically block the space for an answer. For the signature on this form, it states that typing your name serves as your electronic signature. And at this stage, you don't need to provide a handwritten signature. Just enter your full name and the date, and once you've filled out everything, you can click Validate. The system will notify you if any sections are incomplete. So any missed parts will be highlighted in red, and after addressing those, you can click Validate again. And once validated, you can no longer edit the form. So if there are any mistakes, you'll have to download it again and fill it out and validate it again. Save it and upload inside the portal and just do the same for the other form. Again, read the instruction to avoid any mistakes and take your time on filling out this form. Once you're done with all the forms and documents, you can proceed in uploading your proof of payment here. If you haven't paid the fees yet, click the provided link and it will show you how much you need to pay. So once you're inside this page, you can choose option 1 and then answer the questions. In our case, it's sponsor a family member and then click continue. Then I selected here the second option, which is spouse. Next, for the RPRF, you have the option to pay it now or later, but I highly suggest paying it now to reduce processing time. And if you have dependent children, select yes, otherwise select no. Next is the biometrics fee. 
If you're exempt from the biometrics fee, select no. In my case, I haven't done biometrics yet, so I selected yes, and the total amount to pay will be displayed. As of the date I am editing this video, IRCC's application fees have changed, so the total is different from what I mentioned earlier in this video. And once everything is okay, you can log in to pay and save the receipt, which you will upload inside this portal. When you're done, the last part is the declaration. If any required documents or forms are missing, the submit your application button will not be clickable. So double check everything before submitting. Now let's review what I missed. And since I haven't done the declaration yet, that's one reason why the submit button isn't enabled. So let's try filling this out. Click complete and return to application and it's still not enabled, so I'll check the forms. If you see here on the side, the supporting documents section has no check mark yet. So that means I missed something. I haven't uploaded my police certificate and birth certificate yet. So let's upload those and as you can see, the naming convention must be correct. It says here that the file exceeds the maximum size of 4 MB, so I'll need to compress it. You can search for free file compression tools online and in this case it's a pdf so i'll find a pdf compressor upload the file download the compressed version rename it accordingly and then upload it again after that i'll upload my birth certificate and once everything is uploaded double check everything again see how the supporting documents now have check icon on the side before hitting submit, make sure you double or triple check everything. Here in the additional application form section, you can select any applicable forms that you are submitting. For example, if you're submitting a financial evaluation form, you'll be given the option to download it. Or if you're designating a representative, you can select the appropriate form here. In the additional supporting documents section, you'll upload supporting documents like your spouse PR card and proof of income. You can also upload documents such as proof of language proficiency, letters of explanation, translation affidavits, and the document checklist. I've already uploaded IMM 5533, which is the document checklist. If there's another checklist besides IMM 5533, though I am not aware of any, you can upload it here. You can also upload proof of education, proof of funds, marriage certificates, and proof of relationship. This is where you'll upload supporting documents such as photos and conversations. If your sponsor is a Canadian citizen, then select that option and upload a file. There's also an option here that says proof of relationship to sponsor. You can choose either this one or the proof of relationship option, but I think the proof of relationship to sponsor is clearer since it specifically mentions the sponsor. You might wonder why I uploaded the permanent resident card in both the proof of status section and the additional supporting document section. The reason is that when I click the info icon, it says to upload the PR card, so I uploaded it in both sections just to be safe. If there are additional supporting documents not listed here, you can select others and upload them there. Go through the list one by one to see what supporting documents you need to submit. Basically, these are additional documents such as explanation letters, etc. You get the idea, right? So if you are not sure about something, go back to the checklist and check everything again. Once everything looks good and you've reviewed everything, you can go ahead and fill in the declaration form and you can now submit your application. Important notes guys, if any questions don't apply to you, remember to always put NA or not applicable. Never leave any questions unanswered and always read the instructions. Make sure that all forms have your signature. Double or triple check that you provided all required signatures. If you miss just one signature, your application will be returned to you and you will have to wait another number of months for your AOR or the acknowledgement of receipt. So for supporting documents, make sure that they are downloaded in any of the following formats this could be jpeg jpg or pdf so for each document that you're going to upload there is a correct format and how you're going to name them correctly so it's in the form of last name first name and document name i will show you here the examples on how you should 
um, rename your documents properly. Let me know in the comment section below if you want me to cover this part in a separate video for more detailed information. After submitting the application, you should receive an email that confirms that you have successfully submitted your permanent residence application. But this is not yet your AOR, okay? So just chill and pray that your application doesn't have any mistakes. Once you receive the AOR, that means that your application has been reviewed and most likely is complete and correct. So however, it doesn't guarantee that you are approved, but it's a good sign that you'll be receiving a biometrics request soon or a medical request. So there are some instances that the biometrics instruction letter comes first before receiving the AOR. So don't worry, that's completely normal. So just proceed with the instructions. Uh, one thing I found helpful also guys is joining support groups in Facebook because there are also instances that you have some questions and the people at those groups have similar experience to you. So it's good that you will also join um, some kind of those groups. So that's it guys. I hope you find this helpful and gave you an idea on how to process a sponsorship for your spouse or children. If you want me to make more videos like this, feel free to comment down below and I will do my best to help you. Please don't forget to like this video, share, subscribe, and click the notification bell for more videos. Bye!